There's a certain amount of mystery about the Coast Guard, who he is and what he does. In fact, the Coast Guard has only one aim. Our job is life-saving. Purely life-saving. Anything else is secondary. Well, when they say, what do you do, we can't explain the job to them in any short term. They're usually surprised when they do come up the lookout and see what goes on. In the winter time, you get uh, the sort of deep sea emergencies. These are few and far between. In summer, we have perhaps a thousand boats out here. Well, our main problem are small craft, dinghies, motorboats, capsizing, breaking down, and overdue. And this is where the work comes in. In this district, uh, we average about uh, two incidents or casualties a day. I'd like to see them take more precautions and more thoughts. And they go out without life jackets, they've got kids in the boat. They don't realise that the sea can change within an hour from flat calm to perhaps blowing six to seven and really rough, and it's dangerous. In order to help him save life, the Coast Guard has equipment with which he can challenge the elements. But his life is not all hectic heroics. In fact, it mostly consists of long hours of waiting. On the alert, but waiting. Furthermore, gone is the romantic image of the past. It is Coast Guard! Run, you bugger! No longer is the Coast Guard responsible for chasing smugglers. That's now the job of the Customs and Excise men. The Coast Guard is only concerned with the safety of people in trouble at sea or on the seashore. He's the coordinator of search and rescue operations. But what kind of person is the Coast Guard and how does he work? Basically, he's a man who knows the sea, even before he joins the Coast Guard service. In this way, he can visualize what might be going on out there, even if he's unable to see it. But of course, he doesn't work alone. Although there are only 550 full-time Coast Guards like him, there are 7,000 auxiliary Coast Guards. These are ordinary people with ordinary jobs, who can be called upon at any time to assist the regular Coast Guards. Some share in operations room duties. Some assist in actual rescue work. Others are known as reporting members, because their normal activities place them in good positions for spotting any possible trouble. But most of all, the Coast Guard relies on members of the general public for information and cooperation. They are the people on the spot. If someone's in trouble, the problem is how to bring help to them. And that's where the Coast Guard comes in. Emergency? What service do you require? Uh, uh, Coast Guard, please. Coast Guard Rescue Headquarters. About half past nine, ten this morning. But they said they were going to come back for lunch and it's nearly tea time now, you see. And what kind of boat were they in? I don't know. They said they were going to hire one or borrow one or something. And where were they going? I don't know. They said they were just going for a sail, that's all. What were they wearing? Did they have life jackets on, for instance? Not that I know of. Are they experienced sailors? No, yes. Well, at least they've been out before. Look, have you seen them? Do you know where they are? The Coast Guard now contacts various boat hire people as he puts the pieces of the jigsaw together. Yeah, that's one of mine. It went out about 10.30. Red sail, blue owl, and uh, gap rig. OK, thank you for now. Bye. No, Ben, no red sails out here. There were a few earlier in the day, but um, they've all gone now, however. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, show them Coast Guard. Uh, Roger, thank you. Uh, try somewhere else. The next step is to ask neighbouring lookout posts along the coast. If they haven't seen the missing boat, at least they can be put on special watch. Two people in a dinghy are definitely missing. The Coast Guard must now decide which kind of search and rescue equipment is needed. He could put out a broadcast to shipping through the nearest coastal radio station, operated by the post office. He could ask for a lifeboat to be launched, or an inshore rescue boat, also operated by the RNLI. He could ask for help from the Royal Navy, or from the Royal Air Force. Although all these things belong to other organisations, the Coast Guard knows that a request by him will never be refused. From his own resources, he could send a mobile unit, 
or he could send for the service's own helicopter. The question is, which? Coast Guard, you're all here. I found your two in the dinghy. They came in around lunchtime, apparently. I found them sitting on the harbour wall. Forgot to tell anyone they'd changed their mind. Didn't think she'd worry, they said. There's quite a lot of these incidents where no help is needed. But we don't mind. Every query must be investigated. There may have been a serious casualty, and we're here just in case. The eyeball Mark I is a very useful piece of equipment, but it's not often that a Coast Guard can see exactly what's going on out there. The stations are well spaced out along the coast, and a lot of incidents occur just beyond the range of vision. At night, ships are still at sea, and fog can bring the visibility down to zero. In a sense, therefore, the Coast Guard is usually working blind. There are times when his eyes could use a little help. Radar has proved its worth time and time again. We could see nothing. It was dense fog. I don't suppose we could see hardly the length of the boat. And he told us that. He said, we've been on your starboard bow. You will see the uh, number three boy within about two seconds. True enough, up come the number three boy which uh, would have, if we had to find it in a fog, would have been a round around two or three times. And after we picked up the casualty, he brought us right away in the period. So the Coast Guard was very helpful and we appreciated it very much indeed. The need for radar in the English Channel is obvious. There have been several major collisions with serious loss of life. One byproduct of modern shipping accidents is oil. Pilots of all types of aircraft are useful sources of information on problems like this. And some private flyers are auxiliary members of the Coast Guards. The Coast Guard is responsible for reporting on oil slicks and for warning the appropriate authorities. Two miles south of Hastings. Yes, there is a possible threat to one or two beaches. Yes, I'll inform all authorities. Thank you, goodbye. It's not only the coasts which need guarding. The service has long arms which reach across the sea to meet their counterparts from other nations. During the winter, in the fishing fleets off Iceland, there's a special Coast Guard ship, the Miranda. Apart from transmitting weather forecasts and other information, the Miranda receives a position report twice daily from every ship. If one ship fails to report, then everyone else can immediately be alerted to help look for it. Once again, the Coast Guard fulfills his coordinating role. Since conditions at sea can and do become dangerous, a duplicate plot is kept at a shore station. The effectiveness of this new system has been responsible for saving a large number of lives. The Coast Guard's job is to remain cool and detached. He's the man behind the scene. The only time he becomes physically involved is when something happens actually on the shore. Most of Britain's coastline is highly dangerous, a breakup coast. It always has been. The old, well-tried breaches boy rescue is still needed when other methods are impractical. The men who do this kind of work are auxiliary coast guards from the rescue section. Ordinary men who are quite prepared to spend a whole night up to their waists in icy water in order to save a life. A more modern problem requires a new type of solution. At the height of the holiday season, patrols often go out to places where there's likely to be trouble. Local knowledge tells them where to go, and often they'll find a candidate for a cliff rescue. Oh, hey! Quick, there's a man stuck on a cliff over there. Where, down there? Yeah. Right, hop in, quick. It might be somebody cut off by the tide. It might be a small boy after seagull's eggs. Or perhaps a would-be mountaineer overcome by fright and unable to go up or down. He's down there! 
Right, you stand back away from the cliff, son. Ahoy there! Coast Guard here. We'll be down with you in a few minutes. Hang on, OK? Coast Guard Control, this is Mobile One. Mobile One, this is Coast Guard Control. Control and Mobile. I am in position 665178. Man over the cliff. I'm going over alone and need cliff team assistance. Do you read over? I check position 665178. We'll call out cliff team at once. This single-man cliff rescue method has been developed from the latest mountaineering techniques. And the essence is to be able to get to the person in trouble as quickly as possible without having to wait for help or to rely on help from bystanders. I'm with you now. I'll soon have you safe. Just hold on to there. Right, there you are. Keep your head down. Keep the well in. Yes, I've got it. Right. We'll have you out here in no time at all now. This won't slip, will it? That's safe as houses. Now you're all right. Just relax, son. Mobile patrol, mobile patrol, this is the cliff rescue. Cliff rescue, do you read over? Uh, cliff team, rescue one down here. I've got one boy on a ledge about 150 feet down. He's not hurt, just exhausted. The cliff ladders, if possible, will do the trick. OK, over. Patrol, yeah, Roger, receive that. I see your position. We'll send the lines down. We should be down with you in 10 minutes. Out. Roger, try and get them down the gully if you can. Coast Guard techniques are changing all the time to meet new requirements. Each cliff rescue is different. They may have to call for ambulances and doctors, helicopters, and even an inshore rescue boat to evacuate the casualty by sea. The service is flexible. And incidentally, the casualty could just as well be a sheep or a dog or a goat as a human being. Hey, I'm Okay. You're all right. Okay. Coast guards from different districts may have very different jobs to do. Mayday, mayday, mayday. This is Nabilia calling all ships. We're in the English Channel, 50 degrees, 51.2 degrees. Mayday. Mayday. Coast Guard Rescue Headquarters. Hello, yes, North Orland Radio here. We just picked up a Mayday call on 2182. Did you hear it? Yes, I heard it. But couldn't get all the details. Yes? 
Yep. Are you in contact with Lobelia? Yes, we're going to institute a broadcast to all ships now on 2182. Look at it, huh? We have a mayday in our area. Yes. I'll ring the RAF and I'll be up to look out in a few minutes. Hello, Ben. We've got something on. Would you come to look at? Coast Guard, Coast Guard. This is Seashell. This is Seashell. Do you read, over? Uh, fishing vessel Seashell. Uh, this is Coast Guard Rescue Headquarters. Uh, what have you for me, please? Over. Coast Guard, Coast Guard. I can see red flares about two miles. Repeat, two miles to the west of me. Over. Uh, Seashell, this is Coast Guard. Uh, wait one. Uh, emergency phone is ringing. Uh, we'll call you back. Uh, out. Coast Guard Rescue Headquarters. Red flares? Yes? Where are you calling from? Yes? What direction were the flares from you? Yes? We've already had a report on these flares. Uh, could I have your name, please? And your telephone number? Thank you. Would you remain by the phone and we may call you back? Thank you. Fishing vessel uh, Seashell, fishing vessel Seashell, this is Coast Guard Rescue Headquarters, over. Coast Guard, Seashell, over. Uh, flares are confirmed in your area. We have a distress on already. But this is a new one. Uh, we'll advise lifeboat to launch. Uh, out. A lifeboat, please. What's happening now, then? Uh, we have another uh, casualty report. Red flares are two miles off Old Pier. Harry Thomas is out in his fishing boat. But the weather's too bad for him to stop out. Well, initiate broadcast to ship of the Red Flares. Right. Uh, what's the position of the Lobelia? Uh, nothing further on that. We've got an aircraft out there, searching. Yes, but no rep position report yet. Right, thanks. Hello? Red Flares sighted two miles off the old pier. Advise launch. <laughs> It's not at all unusual for two major casualties to occur at once. In this case, the lifeboat has been sent to investigate the red flares which have been sighted not far offshore. Hello, the Coast Guard, the Coast Guard, the Coast Guard. This is the lifeboat. This is the lifeboat to the Coast Guard. How'd you read? Over. A lifeboat. Uh, this is a Coast Guard Rescue Headquarters. In the case of the Lobelia, which is well out to sea, a totally different approach may be needed. The nearest vessel is one hour away and the Lobelia can't wait that long. Right, tell them we'll send our chopper. Our Coast Guard rescue helicopter will go at once. All the time, new information is coming in, which may or may not help them. Powerboat, yes. When was it due in? Were they carrying safety equipment, distress roads, etc.? Good, we may have seen them. We require position of casualty, please. Over. Lifeboat deck rescue headquarters. Red flares, which you are searching for, possibly came from an 18-foot powerboat, white hull, now overdue. Over. Ah, uh, if these flares came from the powerboat and she's broken down, the tide might well have set her down onto these mudflats. In addition, all the smaller incidents and routine matters have to be dealt with. Oh yes, the uh, sailing regatta. This isn't till next week. We're busy at the moment. Could you ring us back later? I understand you picked up two swimmers on a rubber raft. Where are you bringing them into? Over. Yes, the lifeboat has launched. We are in communication on Channel 16. Coast Guard Rescue Headquarters here. Could we have an ambulance at the old quay in half an hour for two swimmers suffering from exhaustion? The helicopter is on his way. His ETA approximately 18.30 and we'll keep you informed. Their major concern is still with the Lobelia. She has broken down and she's been located. But so far there's been no indication that there are any lives in immediate danger. North Portland Radio. We're going, I'm afraid. We'll all get into the life rafts now, so this is our last chance to speak to you. Lifeboats. I suggest we use a small helicopter for the uh, cabin cruiser on the mud. The pilot is an auxiliary. Good idea. That gives us another lifeboat for the Lobelia. Hello, Coast Guard. I've got it. Powerboat on the mud about three miles east of you. Hey, it looks as if someone's trying to walk ashore. He'll never do it. Hello, helicopter. Hello, helicopter. St. Lawrence Mobile, will you keep above casualty and direct occupants... ...to keep in the boat. Keep in the boat. I will send for the IRB, and will you keep above casualty and direct IRB to the casualty. Over. 
police station here. I've had a report of two boys missing. They went swimming on one of those air mattresses. If their names are Peter and Martin Rockley, they've been picked up by a fishing boat and should just about be coming into the old quay now. We're overhead the Lobelia now. She's still afloat, but listing. I can see one lifeboat and we passed a freighter on the way in. We're going now to pick up injured crew. The Coast Guards are the coordinators and almost invariably the instigators of rescue action. They're well equipped to make use of the considerable resources available to them. The Coast Guard is a public servant, but not a policeman. He doesn't so much guard the coast as guard the people who live, work and play there. But he does need help from the public, even if it's only letting your friends know where you're going. Above all, he needs information. He doesn't mind how much he's pestered with details about anything untoward that might happen around the coasts of Britain. That's what he's there for. That's his job. He doesn't mind how often his tea gets cold. <laughs> 